On PM Express tonight, kidnapped Tardy girls, a rescue mission. It has been on for so, quite some time, uh, but the last one week, we've seen an intensification in the search for these girls. We've been looking at that tonight, and there have been several updates since the weekend. Progress that puts a smile on the face of those who've lost, uh, who have the children missing. 15 persons have so far been arrested in connection with the kidnapping. That is a police update they gave us over the weekend. Also, we know that information gathered on the suspect's iPad indicates, and this is the most important point for the family so far, that the girls are still alive. Um, if you are a parent, you li listen to that, that will give you encouragement. But how do we manage expectations? Because we know that this is still being played out. Uh, Interpol is involved, the search is still on. But this is great news for the parents. We know that the minister responsible for gender, children, and social protection had met the families over the weekend uh, and, and had interacted with them. And from information we are getting, a lot of the family members were really excited about the fact that a high-powered government member had taken keen interest in the applied. She also met with the Nigerian High Commissioner uh, over the matter today. And that is important because the prime suspect in the, in the matter in prison custody currently is a Nigerian. And we know that that has generated this tension between the Ghanaian and Nigerian communities in Takrade. And he, she's been meeting with the Nigerian High Commissioner on, on the developments. And we'll get the latest on what happened after this meeting to see if this can diffuse the tension, but also what, how the Nigerians can help in the rescue mission. Also, we know that Ghana has requested assistance from the UK, also uh, from the US, get, giving us some experts in assisting with our own probe into this very important matter. This tells you how important this has become since the campaign Bring Back Our Tardy Girls uh, became a viral subject of discussion across social media platforms. And this is very important. We put this picture up here because it's part of our campaign. We cannot have a discussion without putting up these pictures. It's important to observe the pictures and share it on your platforms because this is how we can contribute in the set for the girls. If you see something, please say something. And in fact, since last week, we're getting people coming forward, talking to the police uh, about what they may have seen. And you can never know the tip that may eventually end up helping rescue these girls who have been missing for some time. So where are we tonight in finding the tardy girl? That's a fundamental question we'll be asking. Stay with us here on PMS. When we return, my guest is seated. And we'll be delving into these very important matters. <laughs> For the parent is sadness, well mine is not, it is anger, and I expect you to be angry. The kind of anger that is required for state agencies to act swiftly. In the meantime, we're still looking for the girls. See something, say something. Imagine waking up one morning with a dream, with a hope, with an ambition. Maybe you just want to live your life. And then sometime during the day, somebody just kidnaps you and all these dreams are extinguished. This is what has happened to three young girls in the second year Takrade metropolis. Their families are agonizing, their communities are distraught, and the nation is seriously looking for them. But they may be alive. We need your help. If you see something, say something. It's very disheartening and um, it shouldn't happen. And so I, I'm, I'm asking that the authorities involved should make every effort to get our girls back. Our thoughts and prayers at this moment are with the families of the victims. And we also call on the relevant state agencies to expedite action, double the effort to ensure the safe return of these girls. Imagine the agony of losing a sister or a dear one. These are three mothers looking for three daughters. Where is the hope? Where is the love? 
Where is the ray of sunshine? We need to find our girls. Bring back our tardy 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 girls. So where we saw Tazi? Say I'm in a way to our way. So where would our Tazi? Say I'm in a way. So I'm for me, baby. Bring back our tardy girls. Bring back our tardy girls. For the parent is sadness, well mine is not, it is anger, and I expect you to be angry. The kind of anger that is required for state agencies to act swiftly. In the meantime, we're still looking for the girls. See something, say something. Imagine waking up one morning with a dream, with a hope, with an ambition. Maybe you just want to live your life. And then sometime during the day, somebody just kidnaps you and all these dreams are extinguished. This is what has happened to three young girls in the second E Takrali metropolis. Their families are agonizing, their communities are distraught, and the nation is seriously looking for them. But they may be alive. We need your help. If you see something, say something. It's very disheartening and um, it shouldn't happen. And so I, I'm, I'm asking that the authorities involved should make every effort to get our girls back. Our thoughts and prayers at this moment are with the families of the victims. And we also call on the relevant state agencies to expedite action, double the effort to ensure the safe return of these girls. Imagine the agony of losing a sister or a dear one. These are three mothers looking for three daughters. Where is the hope? Where is the love? Where is the ray of sunshine? We need to find our girls. Bring back our tardy 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 girls. So where we saw Tazi? Say I'm in a way to our way. So where we not Tazi? Say I'm in a way. So I'm for me, baby, my mind. Bring back our tardy girls. And our campaign is still on. Hashtag bring back our tardy girls. If you see something, please say something. And as we've become aware last week, as because of this campaign, several people are coming forward now, uh, volunteering information to the police and security agencies. And that information may help in finding these girls alive. The rescue mission is on. We are getting international assistance as well to get to the bottom of this, wherever these girls are. And we'll continue the conversation tonight with, with one person who has been really at the forefront of this, uh, has been taking a lot of flack as well, uh, but that hasn't uh, put her off at all in, in her efforts to help the families who've been uh, caught in this. And she joins us in the studio. She is the minister responsible for gender, children and social protection Madam Cynthia Morrison. Madam Morrison, thank you very much for your time here on PM Express. You're welcome, my dear. So let's start from the top. You met the, um, the Nigerian High Commission today. Yes. Uh, why was that important? It is important because we are dealing with two countries. The ladies are Ghanaians, which I'm responsible for, and the gentleman, in this case, is a Nigerian. So I thought it wise to call the High Commissioner. He's a friend. He's a very nice person, and so I just called him and asked whether he said about this. He said yes. He sent his delegation to go to Takradi to see the regional minister and then to see the police and to find out what he can do because his people also live in Takradi. His, you know, and so I decided to join him, or he joins me to go and meet the gentleman because we needed information from the gentleman himself. We've heard from the police, we've heard from the media, we've heard from the parents. And the gentleman involved is still alive, and he's not at large. We found him. So why don't we go there and talk to him? 
So this evening we have the opportunity of meeting the young man face to face and talk to him. So when is the trip with him to Bakutada? You've gone already with him? The gentleman. The, no, I mean with the High Commission. The High Commission is yes, going. Yes, yes, yes. I met him to, this evening. Yeah. Uh, did you go to Tadi? We met the gentleman. I'm not saying where. Okay. But we okay. Met the oh, gentleman. so you've already met the suspect. We've met the suspect together yes. with the with the High Commission. With the High Commission. Yes. Today. Today. Okay. And the purpose of that because they they come from the same country, speak the same language. They speak the same language. You know, when you travel out and you meet a Ghanaian, even if you don't know the person, and the person speaks Chi. You acquaint yourself with the person. Mm -hmm. You you just you know, oh hi, it's the same, you know, and you're happy. So I just sat it. I've been praying for these girls. Mm -hmm. So I just thought of it. Will it be nice for them to meet the ambassador who speaks the same language with them? And he's supposed to be their head. He is their head here, not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And so when I spoke to him, he initially even wanted me to go with one of his staff. I said no, I want you, and he agreed. So we went together, and we met them. We met him, and we spoke to him at large. I see. How did that help? I can say I breathe a sigh of relief after meeting him because we, they spoke their language. He asked where he's coming from and they spoke into details. That is where I can end. Mm -hmm. So from clearly you're satisfied with at least that progress you've made today? Of course, very satisfied. Well, uh, what about the police? And I'm wondering why didn't the police think, that, think about that before? Mm -hmm. Think about the High Commissioner? Yes. I thought of the High Commissioner. I can't think for the police. I know. Mm -hmm. But the police are leading the investigations. I don't know. Because so the point you made is about somebody who ident the man identifies yeah. with the man, both in terms of language, yeah. in terms of country of origin, yeah. um, mannerisms, all these things are important. You strike that acquaintance, you, stri you use those common background, the traits, their origin, etc. And that sometimes can, can disarm a person. And let a person open up to you. So I'm just curious, why didn't the police? It ends here. That side of it ends here. Until we unravel the mystery, mm. you know, since they are investigating, I can't go further. Yeah. But I can say that I can breathe a sigh of relief. Um, the, all my assurance is that the girls are alive, that I'm praying, and I'm just hoping to hold them in my arms and embrace them and welcome them home. Mm. And then from there, we can start our, start our crusade educating uh, not only our young girls, mm. all of us, all of us, anybody stands, you know, the chance of being adopted or kidnapped. So um, let's see how it goes. I know in my heart of hearts that um, these girls are going to come back. Madam Tiwa is a police officer and she is also optimistic that the girls will, will come alive mm. so you, you met the families over the weekend yes um, and you gave them assurances yeah one of the key things based on what the suspect i guess had said that the girls are alive which was relayed to the parents the reaction you got from them was one of gratitude very much so however Managing expectations becomes important at this point because mm -hmm. we know that this individual that we were relying on had been very sly in the past, you know. So, how is that factoring into you know, how we're dealing with the parents in terms of the assurances we've given them? It's not because of the assurance I gave them. Mm. The guy himself had said already that the girls were alive, mm. but the fact that I went to see them, you know give them some joy and gladness that at least, you know, I've gone there to um, just sympathize or empathize with them because I believe that the girls are still alive. So, but just to share in their grief, mm -hmm. because at this time that they haven't seen their girls, it is a worry. I know as a mother, even though I did not birth these girls, I can't sleep. I just sleep and then I wake up and I'm thinking, what next? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do we launch a crusade? Do we go on the floats? Do we do this? It's something that I've been worried about since ever since I heard the story. So you can imagine a mother, you saw her wailing on the television, you know, is my daughter going to come back alive? Is she dead? That is the feeling that goes on in my mind also. Mm. But the optimistic thing is that I believe they are going to come back alive. Yeah. So after talking to them, you know, they were grateful. Um, they are going to have therapies and all that, you know, make sure that they are fine. And, the brother, there's one brother who looks so traumatized, the 21-year-old's brother. 
He's been back and forth the police station, and the sister has been gone since August. And it's just not a, 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 a joke at all. Between August and now is a long time. Mm. And he looks so down. The mother is virtually broken, but the father is a bit stronger. To say a man is strong, these issues, he may be strong facially, but his heart you cannot tell. The other one, the younger one, we met the father, we didn't meet the mother. And then the second one, we met the mother, the willing mother, we met her, but we didn't meet the father. And we met the sisters. And I've been, I had already been talking to the sister even before I got there. Because she was the one who gave me the, all the details. When I heard a story, I called her and she gave me the details before I called the police and I went there. But the thing is that the guy lives with them. He lives in the neighborhood. They know him. They know him. He, he's, he's been a friend to them. And that is, is the scariest part of it because it can happen to anybody. Mm. Your friend can just ask you to accompany him or her somewhere and then they lure you into a, such a thing. That is the worrying part of it. But all I can say is that we are still hoping and praying. Mm. When possible. was the first time you heard about these kidnappings? Was it the first day? Um, I was at but in a retreat, I think on Thursday. In the Kosovo? Thursday, in no, Saint Chi. Saint Chi. You only called me. Was it, was it, was it Wednesday? Yeah, I think it was. that was so a, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, because somebody earlier on said some girls had been kidnapped. Then it was a one radio guy. Then he called and said, oh, I don't think it's true because I haven't heard it again. And mm. then the call came from Joy FM. So I, when that person called me, I called my chief director. That's, that's what I've heard, and that she should call Takradi and find out. Mm -hmm. Before her response, Joy FM called me. And so I called her back and said, I think it is true because Joy FM has called. Mm -hmm. Have you had any information? And she's like, I called social welfare and they said they haven't had anything. So it was something on the quiet until I think the noise started. And then the, the, media, campaign. the media campaign started. So uh, it was like, when and how? And they said August. And I was outraged that August and you haven't told me no letter, nothing from any circles. We started from there, making sure that we get, and then the media came, so we are getting, I think we are making inroads. Pro progress. But what you just said there is epitomizes the anger of many people. I think your word you used was you were outraged mm -hmm. by even uh, the minister who was responsible for children, social protection. You didn't know until last week, and the girls, one of them, at least the first one, had been missing since August. Mm -hmm. What does it say about, and we need to be honest and confront this problem, right? Because this is why things like that then begin to fester. What does it say about the system? And the system, I mean, the entire system has failed these parents. And you talk about the, the woman crying. You, you at least accept, and you're part of the system because you are a minister of state, has failed these, these parents. You are journalists, we have all failed. You inclusive. You, you were expecting No, hear. I no 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 nobody nobody You were expecting to hear something. No nobody I was expecting to hear something of, of, without of, information. For, fortunately for How me How do I get information? Somebody has to tell me. True. Fortunately for me, I nobody voted There's for no me. For, I, I but know. Somebody voted for for you but and I, we gave you the power to Did you act. vote for the police? We voted for the man who appointed the the IGP, who appointed you. Who, no, who has no, the power no, to fix no, all no, this? No, 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 no. Don't go that tangent. No, but that's important. The, the president did not appoint all the police people. He appointed, he appointed the IGP. True. And, IGP and the IGP is, is a figure. representation and of the what of they the, haven't told of, him? Of the police service. The moment you called me, the next person I called was the IGP. But you raised a very important question. Yes. If the IGP has failed, he hasn't been sacked. The man that takes ultimate responsibility will be the man who appoints him. Fine, but if IGP has not been told, he is at the top. And the, he is not in Takradi. Mm. He is in Accra. It is Takradi who have to leave information to IGP in Accra. Mm. And if they haven't told him, what will he do? Well, Let's face fact. You sit here to work for your boss. Yeah. Something happens, I don't know who your boss is. Mm -hmm. And you don't tell him, how would he know? Something is broken here, you don't tell me, how would he know? How do we blame him? We blame you. 
So you blame the person who is responsible, the person who the people complain to. He is the one who the blame. IGP you don't blame. You don't blame IGP straight away. The IGP. I will not let you blame IGP. It's not because he's IGP. I blame him when I have to blame him. Yeah. But in this position, you can't blame IGP. You blame the one that they made a complaint to. He has to report to somebody. And then that somebody reports to somebody. We have the divisional, we have the regional, we have whatever. They are ranks. If they haven't told IGP, IGP, how would he know? So what you has straight away blame IGP? So, Tell me. So what has happened? Can I blame your boss if you are rude to me? What, what has happened? Can I blame your boss if you are rude to me? What has happened? Can I blame your boss? You answer and I answer. Yes, yes. We're yeah, having no, a dialogue. I'm, no, no. You blame an IGP. If, and if, I, I, if I ask the question, you probably understand where I'm, I'm going. I'm also with answering it. your question. My question will answer you. I'm My question will answer your question. <laughs> <Bear off>. if, <laughs> what has happened then to to if we if we accept the argument that Start the blame from the guy. You who see, let's it. put the what blame aside. No, it's important. And then, listen, we the reason why yes. this is important is mm -hmm. our systems that we're dealing with today. We have all failed, and you were taking yourself but, but, out. But it, if you put the yourself reason, in, no, I, know I will not put myself in because nobody voted for me. I don't, I don't, don't earn taxpayers' money. We are not doing. I don't no, no, earn no, 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 and um, appropriate sanctions, this continue. My question to you we'll is... We punish IGP my, 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 because no, somebody did my, not my, tell my, my question to you is, if we are to blame the, 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 the police officer, what has happened to him since this happened? No, let's finish your question. But that's my question, yes. If you blame IGP, mm -hmm. where does he come in? Until they tell us, we told IGP, he did nothing, then we can blame IGP. So, but since he's not been told. So, but back to my question. Yes. The person who failed to tell the IGP, what has happened to him? That one is a legitimate question. But that's my question. Do, yes, I don't know what has happened to him. But nothing has happened to him so far. Maybe something can happen to him. Maybe nothing. I don't know. But it, but, but isn't you, that a problem? It is a problem. If you talk about that, that I can answer that. Is but, a but that's what that's my direct question to you. But you know what? Let me tell you something. When these things happened, yeah. the parents started paying the ransom before they came to the police. They did not come straight to the police the first time. They started dealing with the, the, um, sus excuse me, the suspect. Mm. They did not come straight to the police. It went on. For, we are not here to do blame game. We are not here to um, add more fire to whatever. But we need to learn from the failure so learn, we can build we are, a better we are, system. We are going to learn from it. Mm. But until now, all I'm thinking is that how do we get our girls? And that is what we are trying to unravel. When he gets to the blame game, I'll come back here and then we'll talk about it. Our systems, how our system should work and everything. Even in our almighty America, people are kidnapped. Mm. And the police sometimes go for years and they don't find the persons. Mm -hmm. don't, you know about that. This is not a, a good story to hear. This is not good news in any home. It shouldn't happen. It has happened. How do we get the girls back? And then appropriately, who should be punished? We have to punish if there is any punishment for anybody. But for now, my sitting here is to appeal to the general public. Any clue, anything that we can hear to bring these girls back is what I am, yeah. Which is what we are helping you to do. Yeah. And, and, and you raise Helping me to do. And you raise, the police. You, 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 we, we are helping. <laughs> we are helping. Because it's a, as you say, it's a partnership. And we recognize yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Until we picked this up last week, yeah. this was a forgotten case. And it happened, the first one happened in August. And you mentioned what is the media's role. That is the media's role. Yeah. If we had not taken this up, we would not be where we are today. Yeah. But the bigger question is about those people we pay our taxes to, the police, the IGP, the ministers. Why do you want to bring IGP no, to No, this? it's important. It's important. It's important. We shouldn't shy away as a country, Mother Minister, I respectfully put that to you from putting blame where it is and sanctioning when we have to. Because these parents currently, and you've been there, you've seen them, they're distraught, right? Fundamentally, they want their, their children back, and we all do. But we need to see the system working to fix the challenges. Is the system, example, is the system working to fix the example, challenges? Give me examples. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm so talking about the challenge that you yourself addressed. That you were outraged because, because didn't nobody tell told me. you. Yes. Because this had gone on and no, people thought it's the people who were supposed to fix the problem mm. thought it's okay. They didn't tell you. They didn't escalate it until media takes it up. Those are the challenges that need to be addressed. Yeah. My question to you is what has been done to pluck those loopholes now on the back of what is happening with these three girls? When I told, I have spoken to you like a couple of times. 
I told you, I met Madam Tiwa. Mm -hmm. We talked about it. I haven't even met the IGP. I spoke to him at length about it. I haven't met them. All I'm looking for is to get these girls. And then, if there's any sanction, we'll get there. Because definitely, I told them, the police, I'm sure they are listening. I told them I was not happy for three things. One, for not informing us, especially me. And it makes me look so awkward that there's this thing going on since August, and I have done nothing about it. No. I'm looking at these children as my very own, and I'm so passionate about human beings, not only children, with human beings as a whole. Whether that person is mine or not, I am very, since that person carries the same blood that I do, that is, that is my life, that is me. And so for these girls, I see them like my own, that are lost and I'm looking for them. But one, I didn't like the way they did not report to me. Two, I didn't like the way they said the suspect had left, had escaped. Three, I didn't like the way they said the suspect was not talking. Those three things. And but what did they tell I, you when go, you said that? I would go, I when, you, when you told them that to the face, what did they tell you? I, what would they say? I told them together with the original and everything. They accept the responsibility? I am, a, I am a member of the Defense and Interior Committee. Oh, so in that is my In Parliament, yeah. so that is my committee. And so I told them as I should tell them. You know, they accept the responsibility? They did, but why not? They did. They did. I didn't I expect any explanation. I told them as it is. Now we've moved from there. It is about the girls. True. That is what I am now praying for, that we get them. And then we'll move from there. Because I told them I was going to come back. And I told them certain things that I can't say here. And I'm going to go back to Takwadi. Mm. After that, we find the girls. And then we, we will sit down and talk about that. That is when IGP will come in. in. In my mind, that is when IGP will come in. But for now, I hold on to what the revelations that I... Are observed. Mm. We will come to your committee shortly because members of your committee, both the chairman and the ranking, have been speaking about this because, as you can imagine, it's unimportant. But we will come to that very shortly. Um, let's stick with the children because I, that's the most important aspect of the conversation. The, you've said tonight, I think I heard you say that one of the things you're trying to do is get help for the family yeah. as you look for mm. the girls. What sort of help? Are you arranging for the families? Psychologist, we arranged one for the, especially the mothers and even the fathers who look cool. So we arranged for that one. Um, Madame Tiwa arranged for one at police hospital. But when I got there, I realized that the Fian Quanta had one. Okay. So I asked them, you know, to go get, um, take them for observation and counseling. Mm. So number one, we've done that one. And number two, there's not everything that we see on air, so we, you know, we, whatever help we can and now I'm in contact with them they call and I call mm -hmm. if there's any information we share if they hear anything they call me and they tell me and if there's anything that I have to tell them to yeah. tomorrow I'm going to talk to three of them again and then tell them um, just find out how they're doing but like I told you until we unravel the mystery there are certain things that we cannot just say on air yeah but at least I am certain that um, as I s sit now, I know that the girls are still alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I pray that they come home. So far, as far as the dealing with this is concerned, I wonder why we have colleague ministers of yours who this directly falls on your lap. Interior minister, national security minister. We haven't heard anything from them. You, rather, have been front and center. As you said, taking all the, all the flack. Doesn't that bother you? Is this the only radio or TV station? There are other stations. Maybe they are speaking elsewhere. No, they are not. Who told you? Do I you know. monitor the airways? Yes, we do. Me, I don't monitor the airways. So I can't so I'm telling you an authority, they are not. That's what you think? No, I know that. There are other media stations. Maybe they are speaking on other stations. No, I don't, I don't even want been... them to speak. Why? I want them to work. Then they are working. Are they? Of course they are. You've been there. You've been to the ground to see... What is really Who happening with the family? go on their own behalf. Did you go on their behalf? Of course. I mean, the defense and interior and both of them. I, today I was with them. You went on the behalf of the interior minister? Of the government. I represent I get, the government. I get that. I'm, I'm just and I'm the mother of the government. So I went on, from the government. Yes. I didn't go on my own. As but my question is, the ministry that are directly responsible for this. I am also Security, direct, interior. I am defense and interior committee member. So but I you, represent you went, them. You went there in your capacity as a minister for gender and, then and social also, protection. And then also, you asked them. I told them that that is my committee. So I represent them. And today I was in a meeting with them in parliament. Meeting with? 
defense and interior. I'm talking about the ministers. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about the ministers. Today we are on recess. Yeah. We are resuming tomorrow. No, but Today I was with the defense and interior minister. Okay. Defense. Okay. And you can ask anybody. I, I thought you said defense and interior committee. No, 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 no. We minister. Are, we are ministers. Okay. We are on recess. Okay. But today we met. So you met, the, the, you met the I interior have met minister? Them, I've met Ambrose, I've met Niti today. Oh, that, that's a defense minister. Defense and interior, we are the oh, same committee. Oh, now I get what so. you're saying. When you said defense and interior, oh, you thought it was committee. committee, yes. No. You said you met? The ministers. Okay, the ministers. Today. Okay, so you've met Niti Wall okay. and you met Ambrose Derry. You can call them and find out, they'll tell you. No, I, I have no basis to doubt you. And, and, and the meeting was for what? To brief them what you found on your trip? You don't, we talk behind the scenes. You are talking about government. Yes. I am government. They are government. Yes. And I, we, the three of us cannot go at the same time. And it's appropriate that I'm also in their ministry. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is like a intertwined something. I am still with them. We talked before I went. We talked on this. You pick my phone. You see their calls on, their numbers on my phone. Mm -hmm. What do we do? We talk. Mm -hmm. What is happening? What, what is this and that. It's not everything that I can say here. But we, there's a collaboration between the three of us. Okay. And, and, and this conversation is, is, is about what? Finding the girls or of course. what the stakes What they are also do? doing behind the scenes. What are department. they doing? I can't tell you. This is an, uh, a security thing that they are doing. I can't just sit here. Anytime you call me, even on the phone, I tell you it's not everything that I'll say. True. I will let you know certain things that I can say. And even sometimes before I talk, I find out from there, even Madame Tiwa or whatever, mm. should I say this? What should I say? Is it right when I say this and say, no, it's not time for you to talk about this. Let's do go this way. Yeah. So I am not only here speaking on my capacity. Whatever I want to say, since it's a security issue, I, find, I ask them whether I can go about it. But I, at least because as I'm a mother, I should show my face, you know, and then talk to certain issues. And also so to encourage my young people. Interior minister show you want to call him, well? call him. I am defense. I am interior. I am gender. You chose to do this on your own volition because you believe no. they are your because they believe these no. people are your children. This is and a that government that I belong to. Yeah. And what is you want the three of us to go together I, before my, you know I, I guess, I guess, they're I doing guess my, something? I guess my question is, I think a bit of the huge part of what you said is information, public information is very important. And you've been speaking a lot. The interior minister definitely will come will come to this public discourse. In terms of calmness, today we talk to you about the sense of fear in Takrade. The police tell us they've been receiving several numerous calls. People are panicking in Takrade. Somebody takes your daughter to buy lunch and you think he's in kidnapped. We're having those stories in Takrade. And what my question is. What has that got to do with the police? If somebody question, takes your daughter to my, buy lunch. My question, when you are taking your girlfriend, if, if I, if out, I ask, do you ask permission from your mother? If I, or if I ask mother? the question, you will appreciate my, my question. Me, why don't you want to my, answer my question? No, when you take no, a girl, because I haven't, you ask ask I haven't asked my question. Okay, go on. The sense of hysteria in Takrade mm -hmm. can be dealt one of the ways to there. do with it is... I am a Takrade girl. Yes. I am a second I'm, I'm just girl. quoting what the police have been telling there. us. Information. Have you been there? Information. I'll come to... I'll, information is important. I'm asking, why can't we hear from the interior minister and address these concerns? Because he's interior minister. You can call him and ask him. You called me. You do, can call Do I him. have to do that before have he sees that me? this is important? Do you know what he's doing? Maybe he's doing something you don't know, but you called me, mm. called Interior Minister. But, but my, why must a media house call the Interior Minister before he addresses a concern like that in Takrade? He's working, he has people working, maybe he's even spoken. More important than speaking to the country at a time like this and addressing. I will and not let us. you blame them for nothing. I'm not blaming, I'm asking you the question since you've been talking to them. I'm asking you. I want to understand when what you is are it going that going out with your you girl, don't want to do you tell it? your mother that I'm going out with this girl? Anyth even you can be kidnapped. You sitting here, you can be kidnapped. Mm. I can be kidnapped. Anybody yeah. can. So it is not an, a simple thing. And even almighty America, you go to Canada, you go to anywhere in the world, they kidnap people. So we shouldn't, in court, make it as if they fail so much that they mm. kidnap girls. The girls are not even living with the police. But, but you know what else happened in Canada when somebody thinks that that happened? Mm -hmm. What happened? You, you see the people responsible giving regular updates, speaking, giving information. And my question is, we've sat here, our interior minister hasn't spoken. The national security minister hasn't spoken. National security coordinator hasn't spoken. The you, gender minister has you, spoken. You have their numbers called them. Maybe they've spoken somewhere that I Since don't know. Since you mentioned Canada, so and, and you no, the them. media do not make the call before. They that hold not, press conferences I, you, on the daily basis it happens, and I've give lived in, I've lived in America, not lived and lived, but been in America yeah. where things like this have happened. And it's the even parents themselves who go looking for their children and they find them.
They hide detectives, they hide whatever. But they can unravel the mystery. You want, and you they want, could, no, 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 no. That's, that's not what, what, what I'm saying. No, no, no. Yes. You are pushing me and I'm telling you something. Yeah. I have been there with the mothers. Have you been there with them? I have been there. Mm -hmm. We've spoken. We know what we are doing. And I'm telling you, it's not everything that I can say here. You are just trying to put blame on the interior mm -hmm. minister and the defense no. minister and the IGP. And I am telling you, I don't know whether they've spoken or not to the media. But I have dealt with them. Mm -hmm. There's um, IGP. I've spoken to him. I've spoken to Madam, we, we look on my phone, we've been talking to, talking to Madam Tiwa almost every, she gives me updates and I give her updates on where we have gotten to. Mm. If I'm speaking and you expect that everybody should talk, I am here and I'm telling you, I am speaking on behalf of the government. Okay. I'm not here as Cynthia Morrison. I would have been in bed, but I'm speaking here as Cynthia Morrison representing the government. Mm. So just take it easy and then join this, continue praying and the campaign goes mm. on and we get our girls my, and then my, my we'll come and sit here and then we'll My final question on. to you on this, yeah. you've been speaking true mm. and I'm sure the parents out there, some of them have called you to show you their gratitude to yeah. what you've been saying, is, but it's not everything that you can tell us. Yeah, it's not everything. That's why the, the interior minister who's directly responsible he, whatever, could provide further and better what, particulars it's not that I don't and, have address, it. No. and address the general security situation in Takrade and elsewhere across the country. Not that I don't have this. the details, but I won't speak to the details yeah. because we are still in, doing some work, yeah. the background work. And you know that it's security issues, you don't just talk about everything. That is what I'm saying. It's not everything. He won't even, even if he's here, he won't tell you because yeah. we are still working. He won't tell you. All he will say is that there should be calmness, there should be whatever. Yeah. But, the details, but even that helps. And that we have. That is what I have said. You want to hear his voice heard. before? But there are details that he only can provide. Oh, please. Information oh, is important. I know, so are we going to, are we going I'm to not hear? saying this is not important. Yes. No, I'm not saying it is not important. But I'm telling mm. you that I have been in collaboration with them. Mm. We have to, whatever I'm saying here, they know it. Mm. From here, we are also, well, I don't even know whether they are watching. Yeah. But if they are not watching, I'm going to give them briefing and everything even before I sleep. Yeah. But I have to tell you that we are working at it. We are not letting this thing just go down. Yeah. And where blame, you know, where we have to apportion blame, we will at the right time. But all I'm waiting for, I want to be calm, I, want, I don't want to overblow things, get the girls back and then whatever I want mm -hmm. to do, we'll continue doing. That's Madame Cynthia Morrison, and she is the gender, uh, also children and social protection minister. We'll take a short break. When we return, uh, we'll be talking about the, the social safety net. And she just talked talk to us about giving psychological help to the parents, which is absolutely important. But how can we make this the standard practice, really, in a country like Ghana, so that when things like this happen, the minister should not be the one doing this directly. It, the system should just trigger it. I mean, can we put systems in place so we can have that, so that the Canadas and the U.S. states that uh, the minister refers to, maybe we can get closer to that. And we, all, we already know that the Ghana Police Service is getting help from the U.S. and Canada. That goes to capacity. And we'll be addressing that as well. Uh, what lessons are we learning from this that we can apply to avert such future systemic failures? Stay with us here on PM Express. That's live on PM Express. My guest tonight is Madame Cynthia Morrison. She is the Minister Responsible for Gender, Children and Social Protection, having a conversation about Bring Back Our Tardy Girls. But also, what this campaign is, is raising, the challenges is, is, is uncovered about us and the need to fix them uh, going forward. There's a very fundamental point, um, uh, Madame Morrison, between this time and whenever that we are successful in retrieving the girls, that um, everybody hopes will be the outcome, which is that these girls are not harmed. Oh, and I, I guess that's um, part of the things that yeah. is important to you and how we are it going is, about that. It is important to me, but um, the probability too is low because they know that we are trailing on them. Mm. And so between now and then, I think what I'm thinking is that they can abandon the girls and run. Okay. That is what I'm thinking, that they can just abandon the girls and run. Mm. Because it would be unwise to harm them. Because at least, he, you know, I don't think they would, they would harm them. All they can do is maybe abandon them and run. Mm. And I'm praying that they should abandon them where the girls can locate, um, um, access 
an access road or something, it shouldn't be somewhere that um, maybe the girls cannot, you know, escape maybe tie them and leave them and you know that is what i am thinking okay. but apart from that i think yeah. i don't think it, I, I pray that you know god will touch their hearts and they wouldn't do anything silly it's not really not wise to do that and all i know is that the people are asking for money it is only money that they're looking for give us money and we release the girls give us money because they asked one mother that they wanted fifty thousand a five thousand five thousand ghana cities is it fifty thousand and the other one ten thousand are we contemplating the possibility that this might not be a ransom case, but a child trafficking case? No, I haven't thought of child trafficking. I don't think it has got into that. I'm thinking of ransom. Isn't that case. a possibility? Oh, we shouldn't speculate too much because the moment we talk about it, the next person who here will not go and say that. Yeah. I think you see they said, she and then it goes be exploring on. all the possibilities. It is true, but not you know on social media, not on air, not when people are. Uh, are so low, you know, when you mm. speculate, the person listens to Joy yeah. and thinks that what you said is the right thing. Hey, this is what he said. Joy said it mm. and they think it is true. Maybe I, you are just saying speculation. Mm. The person may not add the speculation and then goes on to say that this is what happened. Mm. And then it goes on. That is what happened and the mother said she couldn't sleep. She wept the whole night. So when we went with your crew, they said they don't want to see the media in the house. They had to leave. And I said, okay, you leave. Then I asked them, what is it? Tell us. They told us the whole story. And I told them, if this is what you're going to say, then you should have allowed the media to be here. Because what you're telling me, I have heard already and I've spoken to it. Yeah. And they said, they said, these are the reasons, the way they go about it. So when I came out, I spoke to your crew nicely that, look, this is a sensitive issue. The parents are not happy. Don't let's go that tangent. Let's, you know, because sometimes you listen to the news. Then comiums alone, you know, that they add to the news, yeah. the flavor and everything, yeah. you know, you should feel the plight of whoever is involved. So then the next time I hear is that gender minister says we should enjoy FM, should not whatever. And that is not what I said. So I called him to explain that that is not what I said. This is what they said. And rightly so, the Joy crew, they were not in the room when they were talking. So I had to come out and let them know that this is what they said. Because it was wrong for me to have just come not to tell them anything and then we go on. Whilst I was going around with them. So I thought it wise to tell them exactly what. And even I polished what they said. I couldn't have told them exactly what they said at all. So I just made, you know, a nice presentation that this is what it says. It's not that. But I told the family that we are working with the media. Without the media, we didn't have gotten to where we have gotten to. So if you think they are not saying it right, you should have told them whilst they were here. So they will hear it right from you. So I wasn't surprised when it, the whole thing just twisted a little bit. But, you know, I can forgive whoever for, for that. It's just part of your mm -hmm. job. So. I, I asked that because I understand that you have a child trafficking unit. And yeah, we have a child trafficking mm -hmm. unit, yeah. Are, are they strengthened enough to, oh, to yes. assist if this becomes something that they, they fall in their domain? Oh, yes. We even have a shelter at Medina. And then we have refurbished it nicely, we got donation, and we've now purchased whatever um, equipment they need to run the place. So any moment from now, we, we will commission the place, and we'll invite you to come and see how it's going to go. Yes, but yeah. child traffic, trafficking, not child trafficking alone, trafficking is not a, a small business. It is a very serious syndicate business. It yeah. isn't something that we joke with. Mm. The people who do trafficking, they are mafia people. So when you bring trafficking into this, there are people who would do anything for their money's worth. So um, we are taking, especially we are, do, you know, we, the trafficking we do here in Ghana is to just send your child to somebody to take to fishing, you know, and all, all those things. But people who do the mafia ones, the young ones that they trade for whatever, trade for sex and all that, they are. That is not, um, we mm. haven't gotten there yet. But mm. we have a few trafficked people yeah. who are in the country that we want to relocate to our shelter. Yeah. Uh, however, we've seen um, Ghanaian girls, sometimes even men, been trafficked to the Gulf. Yeah. We've seen that in the sub region, mm. the, the trafficking is happening across mm. the Nigeria to, to Northern Africa, etc., mm. uh, across the Mediterranean. Mm. Last year, there was, a, there was a famous CNN report that tracked from Nigeria the trafficking ring um, and knowing that we are exploring Nigeria angle to this I'm just curious why we are not keeping an open mind about the possibilities and so that we can we, we, we don't spare any effort in, in nipping this in the bar wherever it rests his head. Once the, um, uh, the High Commission has come in then you should know that you'll do further 
checks on that side, yeah. And so um, we, he does, he, he is also in league with his colleagues out there in Nigeria to let them know what has happened because now it has become an inter-country something, Ghana, mm. Nigeria. So he's working around that line also. But he, we don't think that the girls have been sent out of the country. Oh, you think so, we, are, you, we, are, we are operating with the assumption that they're still here in they're Ghana? They're still here in Ghana. But the Nigeria High Commission is also talking to his colleagues out there. You know, they are good. Nigeria is having elections, so there's that um, busy whatever. But he's still talking to them. Today I was there with him when I was making calls and all that. So mm. let's hope. Yeah, They're making progress there in terms of yeah. international link to this. Now, let, let's, let's deal with the bigger question that this raises, mm -hmm. which is the lessons that we may be learning from this. Because I'm sure you want to say quite emphatically that never again you will find the girls. Um, even if it happens, we, the system must work as quickly and speedily as possible. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that has emerged, we know, a good story though, but there's also, it teaches a lot, which is that we are getting help from UK and US to help find the girls. It raises questions about capacity of our, of our local school agencies. I'm wondering, are we learning the lessons, documenting the lessons, most importantly, and determined to enforce and implement them if there are any? First, what are the lessons for you from all that you've been involved in since last week? What lessons are I you I don't mind if anybody comes to help us. We need our girls and we need them urgently. So anybody who would come and give us good help, we need that person. We wouldn't say that we are incapable of bringing the girls back, so we are asking for help. If you ask for help, it means you're a wise person. If you can't do something on your own and you call for help, it means you're a wise person. So I'm happy that other people are coming to help. But our lessons is that we should also be very careful, especially with our environment. We should start training our children to be sensitive around them because we don't you ask somebody what's the color of the shirt you can't even tell you don't even you didn't even think of it when talking to that person so we should start the education right from the scratch and even we as adults also we should be when you are going out at least leave a tree tell somebody where you are going to our children go to school and they walk home whilst we're going to school we used to walk home our mother would go to work and they would walk home it doesn't mean somebody should kidnap you. Even if you invite somebody out, does it mean you should kidnap that person? No. We are all at risk. Anybody. You can be driving and your car would break down somewhere. Somebody offers you a lift and runs away with you. Is it your fault? Is it your mother's fault? Is it your husband or your spouse's fault for you to be kidnapped because you were you know, going home or you live with that person? No. That is why I don't want us to do blame, blame, blame. But we should look into ourselves and say, where did we go wrong? Is there something that we're doing? Or why? Did, what was the motive for these people to do this? Did they do it for fun and it has backfired? Did they do it for money and it has turned this way? Maybe when well, they started, they didn't think it would get this way. Mm. They thought we're just going to do that to exploit money. And now it has turned you know, into uh, something different. So we have to look at all those things. And until we unravel that, situation, that thing, we cannot just sit here and say, oh, it's okay, it happened to somebody, it won't happen mm. to me. It can happen to any of us. What about lessons, the way state agencies have handled this? I guess that's m even more important. Why do you want to just push everything state, no, state, we, state? You've just addressed. you've just addressed the one side of it. We you need to, to we address need to, something and stop the state, 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 state. We state. need to have a complete approach to this. You've addressed what the citizens need to do and the lessons we're learning. I'm asking from the government state agency angle, what lessons can we learn from They are from, also going to educate us. From, they are the security people. Happened. They will tell us how to watch our back. That is what they can do for us. Yeah. In school, we should educate our children how to watch. When they get information, they should bring the information out early mm. so we can, you know, we can deal with it, especially with the security agencies, since mm -hmm. they are the people that people give information to. And also to us, when anything happens to you, the first call is to go to the police. Yeah. Sometimes they will tell you, if you go to the police, we'll kill your child. And so they are afraid. They will not go to the police. And by the time they get to the police, it would have been late, and then they, all the, the clue would have been gone, that they, you know, the mystery around it. They can't even unravel it. So the first thing is to, and we should be friendly with the police. And the police also in turn should know that they are being paid to work for us. Not work for us as being slaves to us, but no, they are, they are there for us. Mm -hmm. And they are the people that we can trust and have confidence in. When you take your case to the police, they should be able to handle it with profession. 
Sometimes you go to the police and they are not friendly. You can't even tell when you travel out and you want information. This is the police. When you get lost, you look for a police and look at them with all their guns and everything as if they are going to war. But you can approach them from nicely. He picks his phone, he looks onto the phone, and then he tells you your direction. You know, he will make sure that you are safe with all the gadgets around them. But here with this little gadgets, you can't even talk to them. Some of them are so rude. Some of them are not nice. You go to the police station and, okay, my child has been raped, and they'll tell you, go and bring the, the culprit. How do you do that? And they, we don't have a car. There's nobody here. I'm here alone. I can't go. That, that mm. is not good for us. Yeah. We'll talk about that. But I've told you, me, I, don't, I don't say that because I am the defense and interior or because I'm from the um, government, I will not talk about the negatives. That is not it. Mm. But you are just pushing me to do negative. Me, I'm not a negative person. Mm. I'm more optimistic than negative. You are doing negative, negative. I'll, I'll submit, I'll, 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 negative. Was pushing you, I'll do positive. I was pushing you so that we embrace. No, no, no. When it gets there, you see, at this time that we are looking for the, the girls, so that we, we, don't repeat we do them. it, but let's pray and <clears> get the girls. We'll be here. The police will be here, and which, you see how I will which, talk to them. Which I'm sure you here. know has been our focus all of last week, and uh, the girls. My final question, uh, because you said you were a member of the Defense and Interior Committee, your members on the opposite side, James Agaga held a press conference last week, in which he said that, uh, as far as he's concerned, they're going to push to get the Interior, the IGP, etc., hauled before the committee, uh, for them to brief the, the committee on, on what has happened so far. Is this something that you support? I spoke with James yesterday. I don't want to say it on TV. Maybe he's watching. He is my, he knows, I'll say it. Um, he wants them to come to the committee and explain to us. So they can come to the committee. Do you support that? I don't support it, but if he wants them there, that is his committee and he wants his... He, you don't he support Parliament taking a central position in a step? No, Parliament will speak matter. to it, obviously. I believe yeah. that when we go, it will be a topic that we'll yeah. talk about. So Parliament will talk but about it. But we just don't want you to talk about it. I'm asking whether you take action beyond just talking about it, including action, getting, action getting answers doing. on our behalf. We are doing it. But the only Parliament, thing is that I mean. to Parliament, we are, as, as a committee, we are going back as tomorrow. As your committee, going back tomorrow. Definitely there's a committee, yeah. so we'll talk about things. Are we going to get a hearing, for example, that you will demand from the relevant agencies? I will demand a hearing. I've already spoken to them. I know what they'll say. No, I mean you and if your James colleagues. Is this something that you'll back if the other committee members suggest it? Um, normally when they suggest, they want to see the... Um, the ministers, yeah. they write to the floor, the, ch the, speaker, the speaker, and then speaker gives them audience. Mm. And then they, come, they don't come to the But committee. you support that? Not that I support it, but if they want So you them, don't support that? I haven't said I don't support If they want them, why not? They can call them. Even me, when they you want them, You don't have a position whether or not we should, we should demand some answers? No, it's, good, it's good if the house would you know, want to know what mm. is going on. I don't have a problem with that one. Okay. But to say that they are summoning them, you know, we can call them. Sometimes mm. they call us. It's a friendly call. They want information. You mm. just come. It's not a fight if they call you. Yeah. Okay. It is just for you to give them answers to questions that they don't understand. You are there to work for them. So if they need answers from you, they call you. It doesn't mean it is any big deal. Sometimes, you know, you make... I don't want to use a word. But they can call them if they want to. Cynthia Morris, I'm grateful that you join us. Thank you so That's much. That's the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection. Um, and the campaign is on. Hashtag bring back our tidy girls. If you see something, most importantly, please say something. Enjoy the rest of your evening.